This is Jack Rice on the campaign trail. I'm here in Minneapolis at the Hillary for President campaign headquarters with Jonathan Beaton again, the Minnesota Communications Director. Can you describe what's going on behind me? How big is the organization? How many people involved? Volunteers? All of them. Well, it's hard. I mean, we grow every single day, so it's hard to keep a, an exact number. Um, but, I mean, what we've got going on here on a Friday night is we're calling people. So we've got volunteers who've come in, um, you know, giving up their Friday night, and they are calling supporters throughout the state and talking to them about the importance of getting out to caucus. I mean, this being a caucus state, you essentially have, um, I believe it's an hour and a half window to get in there and cast your vote. You know, there's a lot of people who believe that, you know, also on the presidential side, it's a little different than a traditional caucus. It's almost much more like a presidential preference ballot. So some people, you know, don't know that if all you want to do is just cast a ballot for president and you don't want to go through the longer caucus process, you are actually allowed to just go into your caucus location and, you know, show that you are from that precinct. You, you know, sign a piece of paper, they hand you a ballot, it's a secret ballot, you check, you check off your candidate and hand it back to the person, you know, working that particular uh, caucus precinct. That's important to get out to people, you know, and it's also important to stress to people where their precinct location is so that that, you know, isn't the reason why they're not going out to the polls. So it's all about turning out your supporters and that's what people come in and volunteer to do. Super Tuesday is February. February 5th, right. 7 p.m. This is when everybody is supposed to be here. 22 states across the country, including Minnesota. Right. When I was in New Hampshire, I recall being at an Obama event, and I was talking to a lot of his supporters there. They're from all over the country. They literally are following him around. Right. What happens? Is Super Tuesday different simply because there are so many states going on that, that it's not quite the same as what we saw in some of the earlier primaries and caucuses? Well, I mean, the number of delegates on the line are just huge for Super Tuesday. And out of the 22 states where there's primary caucuses on February 5th, I mean, Minnesota ranks number seven. So we've got 88 delegates up for grabs. Um, you know, 72 of those will be pledged delegates. So this is a very, a very important state for both campaigns. Um, but I mean, essentially, you will with these operations in these states, whereas a lot of them will shut down and the staff will go on to, to different things. Um, you know, just because there won't be as many states up for play at any one time. So some of the some of the staff people that we have here worked in Iowa, um, worked in New Hampshire, and have now come out to a February 5 state. But uh, you know, after Super Tuesday, we'll have to see where all the campaigns are, are at. But uh, I mean, uh, some people will not be working on a particular campaign because it may be decided. So. Are you surprised by the number of people who volunteered this early on? Uh, it depends what you mean early. I mean, we're uh, we're 11 days out, uh, so in my time frame, it's not it's not early. But, but see, that's interesting that you bring it up because in your time frame, and this is an organization that you have to get up and running very very quickly, right. and yet what we see on a nationwide basis. There seems to be this also almost obsessive look. I mean, it's it's a Friday night tomorrow, and in on a Saturday, everybody's looking at South Carolina. They're not looking at anything else beyond South Carolina. And then they literally move to the next fight. And so it's only after those are done that they even start looking at this. Right. How and do you motivate people to say, no, 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 you need to be here right now? Well, and, and when we started up our operation, that was, you know, we didn't all do what we call voter ID calls or, or reaching out and telling people to get to the caucus. We were calling people and asking them to come out and volunteer and stressing the importance of the February 5th Congress. And, you know, it's it's easy to, to have the nation focusing on South Carolina, but here in Minnesota, we have to focus on February 5th. And in all the February 5th states, that's what people are, are focusing on. So, I mean, I'm very pleased that on a Friday night we get people coming in and, and giving up, you know, one of their few late nights that they get to themselves to come and work for Hillary Clinton. That, you know, is obviously a testament to, to how they feel about uh, Hillary. Um, but, uh, you know, I think it's a good operation. I'm certainly 
communities with it. We have uh, a lot of phone banks going on across the state. We've got them in at least, I think, 12 cities. Um, you know, Duluth, St. Cloud, Rochester, we've got several in St. Paul, um, Hibbing, uh, Mankato, Wilbur, I mean, a lot of, a lot of places. So, um, you know, this is kind of a, an example of what's going on in, in other places around the state. There's a quote that comes to mind for me. It comes from the late Jerry Fall who said, nothing would motivate Republicans to come out and vote more than Hillary Clinton. I think except Satan, I believe it was something along those lines. And he may have said it uh, more articulately than I would, but I'll leave that to him. If that's true, Right. How does she overcome the negative perception? You know, I mean, this comes up a lot, but uh, I think that the Clintons are the most tested of any of the candidates. I mean, people have thrown everything at the Clintons that they possibly can. And yet, you know, we see that they continue to come across because they stand on the issue and they have the experience. And if you look at the Clinton administration, I mean, if the Republicans want to debate about the Clinton years, we're welcome. You know, we welcome that debate because, you know, we had record jobs, the economy was good, our reputation and standing in the world was great. Um, and contrast that against what we're doing here, not to mention the budget deficit that has been racked up under the Republicans. $250 billion right now. Yeah, I mean, whereas we were actually paying down the deficit under the, you know, under the uh, Clinton administration. And um, so if they want to fight about, you know, the Clinton's record, we welcome that fight. Um, you know, and, and we believe that we are the candidate that will fight back the strongest against the kind of, um, you know, tactics that we've seen in the past, for instance. You know, the smearing of John Kerry's record with the swift boat attacks. I mean, you know, we're, we're ready for anything that they throw at us. I remember talking to a, a senior candidate who's no longer in the race in, in Iowa, and I said to him, and I'll say it to you, it seems that the Democrats rarely miss an opportunity to miss an opportunity. We go back to 2000. I know you've been in four different races, so I'll give this to you. We found maybe one of the most boring, at least perceptually, the most boring men on the planet to run. In 2004, we have a guy who was a bona fide warrior with a silver star and more who couldn't beat a guy who rarely left Texas. Now, if that's the case, some would argue the Democrats don't even know how to win. At least, that's some of the Democratic friends that I've spoken with, certainly some Republican friends of mine I've spoken with, and that's what they've said. Well, I mean, if you look at Bill Clinton and his, uh, you know, campaign in 92 and 96, they threw a lot of that. That was 12 years ago. And, well, but it's, you know, some of us are still around. We know how to run a winning campaign, and, uh, you know, we have a candidate who speaks about the issues that are important to Americans, and, you know, talks about the economy, understands that, you know, the way ahead is not to not increase the minimum wage, that we need to look out for people who don't have health care, the 47 million Americans who don't have health care. You know, we're talking about the issues that matter to people. You know, the middle class in, in America has been squeezed. I mean, college costs have gone up, health care costs have gone up, gas prices have doubled under the Bush administration. And, you know, real wages have not kept up with that. So you've actually got middle class Americans, you know, making, essentially at the end of the day, having less in their pockets at the end of the year than when President Bush came into office. So we're going to be talking about how to change that direction and put the country back on track. Jonathan, thank you so much. Thank you. This is Jack Price at the Hillary for President campaign headquarters in Minneapolis.